Well, hello. Well, hello, YouTube. Um, I decided to come here and do a uh, little live stream on one of my old blog posts. I'm Garrett Smith, Dr. Garrett Smith, the nutrition detective. And my websites, if you want to find more information on this, is uh, they are nutritiondetective.work and nutritionrestored.com. Hopefully soon we're going to consolidate those into one. But for now, I've got different stuff at, at both places. So and if you want more information about what I do, particularly the vitamin A detox program and other things that I have on my uh, on my network, then just wait till the end. This will not be a long video. This is one study that I wanted to go over. So what are we going over today? How vitamin A depletes magnesium or that your magnesium is depleted by vitamin A. Now, many of you may have heard or maybe you've suffered from, like almost everybody out there has, a... Uh, chronic magnesium deficiency. And how do you know if you have a magnesium deficiency? Well, if you use a decent form of magnesium, special, especially topical, and you feel better from it, then you can be pretty darn sure you're pretty magnesium deficient. That's, that's a super simplified way of telling it. I, I get into stuff about the different types of magnesiums and how people can have, um, more positive or even some not so great reactions to to magnesium in the in my detox network. There's there's interesting things. You always just remember magnesium when you take magnesium or you use magnesium, it's always magnesium bound to something else. So you cannot discount the other part that it's bound to. And that's one thing a lot of people do. They think it's just it's just magnesium bound to something and that thing doesn't do anything, but it actually does things. So from this blog post, so the blog post will be down in the uh, down in the uh, notes on the video. I'm going to talk about how this, the research shows that vitamin A depletes your intracellular magnesium. Why should you be concerned about vitamin A depleting your magnesium? Well, because I have another video that goes over how it is a real epidemic of vitamin A toxicity going on right now. Um, so go check that out. What we're going to go over in this paper, we're going to go over retinoic acid. Typically, they use all trans retinoic acid in research, but how retinoic acid, that's what they use the generic retinoic acid term for, typically, which is a metabolite of vitamin A. So if you are eating carotenoids or retinol, which you think you're getting from your, your food, which you're actually getting retinol esters, um, if you're getting vitamin A, it is breaking down at some point into retinoic acid in your system. Okay. So if they're doing a study on cells with retinoic acid, you can be pretty sure that that's what is going on in your body when you have retinoic acid around. So I don't, this is, this is in the biochemistry. I have other videos. Uh, my most recent uh, infertility and vitamin A video, I went over the, the pathway a lot. I'm going to do some other short videos on those soon. Uh, little topics like that, how vitamin A turns into retinoic acid in your system. Same thing as Accutane, same thing as Retin-A. Same thing as these things that they put women on two forms of birth control so they don't have children while they're on it, so they don't have birth defects in their children. That's how toxic this stuff is. Um, anyway, and then the other, another topic that I go over is that there's no difference. Anyone out there who's telling you that there's a difference between natural vitamin A and supplemental vitamin A or synthetic vitamin A or pharmaceutical vitamin A, there's not. They're the same chemical formulations. They do exactly the same thing in the body. The research says so. No one can show me otherwise. I mean, you could try, but you're not going to find it. So those are very important topics that I'm going to cover almost every video with the research to back it up in my other videos. So let's go into this paper. This paper, the title of it is Changes in Magnesium Content and Subcellular Distribution During Retinoic Acid-Induced Differentiation of HL60 Cells. So what they're doing, it's an in vitro study. If you want to call it a Petri dish study. And they have these cells and what they do in a lot of studies to get the cells to differentiate faster. And I don't have time to explain that here, but to get the cells to differentiate faster is they give them retinoic acid. So this is a normal thing in studies. This may actually be a huge factor in some of the studies on epigenetics that people like to love to get into. Um, this, this retinoic acid differentiation may actually be severely affecting the the results and interpretation of some of these epigenetic studies, in my opinion. Anyway, 
I'm going to read this quote, and then after I'm done, I'm going to go and I'm going to repeat the things that they said in a simplified way. Okay. Quote: Magnesium is required for cellular proliferation. However, the differences in subcellular regulation of magnesium between proliferating and differentiated cells has not been determined. I'm going to skip ahead. Using atomic absorption spectrophotometry, we observed a significant decrease, minus 20%, in cellular magnesium content in retinoic acid differentiated L60, HL60 cells. Skipping ahead, following differentiation of HL60 cells, we observed an 18% decrease in magnesium content in both the cytoplasm, regions of the cell excluding mitochondria and nuclei, and the mitochondria. Um, and then the next sentence, there was a significant 40% decrease in cytoplasmic calcium content after retinoic acid-induced differentiation. Nuclear magnesium concentration was not significantly different between differentiated and undifferentiated HL60 cells, although differentiation was accompanied by a 30% decrease in the nuclear potassium to sodium ratio. After differentiation, cellular ATP and ADP content decreased by 31% and 40% respectively. We conclude that during exit from the cell cycle, magnesium redistributes within cells and that the decrease in cytoplasmic and mitochondrial magnesium is accompanied by a decrease in ATP and ADP content. End the quote. So what did we see there? These are the big things to take away there. There was a significant decrease, 20% decrease in cellular magnesium content in these retinoic acid differentiated cells. Gave them retinoic acid, which is a form of vitamin A. It is called the active form of vitamin A. I don't believe any vitamin A is necessary, and I showed that in my vitamin A deficiency doesn't exist video if you want to go watch that one. There is no such thing as a vitamin A deficiency. We do know that vitamin A is a poison that you can get too much, and it can cause all sorts of problems, which I go over in my other videos. So if you have a poison, really the question about the poison is how little do we need before it's causing a ton of damage? Well, they're just adding its cells and seeing magnesium decrease. Here we go. 18% decrease in magnesium content in both the cytoplasm and the mitochondria. Okay. For those of you who are into your mitochondria, you're stealing magnesium from your mitochondria every time you eat vitamin A, basically. Next, we have a 30% decrease in the nuclear potassium to sodium ratio. Now, this is inside the cellular nucleus. We don't, they're, they're saying this is a bad thing, okay? You want, they're saying inside the cell, you want more potassium inside the cell. At the, so, there's more sodium outside the cell and more potassium inside the cell. What I've got research on that I that I go into deeper in my advanced vitamin A detox program is that vitamin A blocks potassium channels. So the potassium can't go back to where it's supposed to be. After it moves one way through the cellular membrane, it can't go back. And so you get too much potassium on the wrong side. And what they're saying here, they're saying it messed up the sodium to potassium ratio inside the cell. The potassium to sodium ratio was really what they said, but most people in the hair analysis field where I'm doing my work, um, they talk about sodium to potassium. They just say it in that order. So then for those of you who are into cellular energy production, retinoic acid, the active, quote unquote, active form of vitamin A decreased ATP by 31% and ADP by 40%. That should make you sit up and take notice, really. Everybody's tired these days. Hmm. Um, a lot of people out there are obsessing about, I, I've had people who are taking three or four types of magnesium. And they never, you, may, people who start taking magnesium, they feel better from it. They notice that they never seem to get out of it or they go and they do their hair tests or they go and they do their blood tests for magnesium and they never get it to where they need to have it. Is it because the magnesium they're taking is not effective enough? Or is it because they're simply eating, some of them are trying to eat a lot of it, 
of this poison that is depleting their magnesium every single day. Now, that's basically the study. That's what I've got for you. Um, I wish I had more in vivo, in, in bodies, you know, in animal bodies, in human bodies, live people. Um, I wish I had more of that, but nobody's been doing that research. So this is what we have. And I can tell you that with the work I do with people, we get people's both because of the approaches that I figured out work and because we're getting this poison out of people, we get people's magnesium levels to come up and stay up. They may still have to take some magnesium, but they don't need to do anywhere near what they used to do. So on that note, if you want to hear more from me, I have this YouTube channel here, um, the vitamin A detox program. It is the, the original and, uh, and Grant Jenneru has endorsed it for those of you who are familiar with him. Um, it is at nutritiondetective.work. Like I said, this blog post can be found at my nutritionrestored.com website. Um, if you like hearing my videos, if you like hearing me talk about this stuff inside the detox program at nutritiondetective.work, there's the inner circle, which is a weekly video Q and A group I do. Um, we have Grant Jenneru on once a month to answer questions. And then uh, there's also the advanced detox program where you can watch my videos about a month later. Um, and then there is, oh, the work I do with individual people. Uh, I do hair and I specialize in hair and blood testing. Actually, I would just, we're going to release a seminar. We're going to do a seminar here, an online seminar here within a couple of days. It starts on March 3rd of this month um, where I'm teaching practitioners how to use blood tests and hair tests like I do with individuals. So if you want to work with me, go to nutritionrestored.com and, and contact us and we can set you up with that. But if you want to learn how to do what I do, then that's the seminar that's coming up. You can find that video on this channel too. So that's about all I have. I'm going to be going through, I'm going to be trying to do a couple of these a week where I'm going through old blog posts and my research forum posts in a, in a more uh, informal way, kind of like this, so I can get the information out there. Um, I do like doing my, my slide presentations, but I don't always have time to get around to doing those because those are very in detail. So anyway, that's all I have for today. This was my first run at doing this again. Um, hope you all enjoyed it. And uh, I will see you later. Have a great day. Bye.